country. We are so glad that we are back. We are talking about cheering each other on and kindness, all things kindness, which is perfect for Valentine's Day. It's so great. It's like, ah, it just fits in wonderfully. Um, yes. Okay, so today's Valentine's Day, February 14th. If you're watching this Important. on Sunday, tomorrow, Monday, is February 15th. And you know what that is? Are you asking Family. me? <laughs> <laughs> I was, but it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> it's so hard to... You guys know from doing so much Zoom, uh, like school on Zoom, that like when your teacher is like, um, does anyone have the answer to this question? Or if they're just asking like the question to ask it and they're going to answer it, you're just like, ah, oh, ah. <laughs> Do I answer? Do I... <laughs> okay, so I'll, I'll just tell you. Tomorrow's family day. And we have our Sanctus Kids Amazing Race. And so if you haven't seen the guide yet, it's on the website. It's on the parent resource page, so your parents can find it there. It'll be posted on our Instagram. And so what's going to happen is you can complete as many of the things on there. But to win a prize, you and your family need to complete at least three of the challenges. And so when you complete them, you can either send them to our email, which will be down here, or you can send them to our Instagram, which will be up here. And Holly and I will be able to see them. And then we can send you your family prize. Yes, which we are so excited about. So make sure that you plan your day accordingly so you can hit a few of the challenges and knock them off the list. Um, but we are so excited. Before we get to family day, we get to learn about being kind to our friends and our family especially the people that we are closest with. So to help us do that, we actually have another special guest who is going to be joining us today. All right, I'm going to let them in. Okay. <laughs> Pastor Nathan. Hey, guys. Hey. We are so glad that you are here. How are you? I am doing wonderful today. It's cold out, but I'm doing great. So good. Well, why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do at Sanctus? Perfect. So my name is Pastor Nathan, or Nathan. Uh, I'm the pastor <laughs> in Pastor, Sanctus. is that your first name? No, pastor is not my first name. My name is Nathan. <laughs> I live in Bowmanville and I am the site pastor in Bowmanville. Uh, I live here. I'm married and I have two kids. Special shout out to Olivia and Alora because they're probably going to be watching. But a big shout out to all the kids in Bowmanville. We miss you. We love you. We can't wait to see you guys again, hopefully soon. And uh, we just hope you're having a wonderful year and spending some extra time at home. Yes, I'm sure they are. And while it's amazing to be spending extra time with our family, I am really looking forward to when we get to be in person at church again. Yes. Me too. Uh, well, today we are talking about being kind to the people that we are closest with, which right now, especially as we're at home, that really means our family members. And so why don't you tell us a little bit about your family, where you grew up, maybe your, how many siblings you have? Oh, I'd love to. I grew up in the country in the middle of nowhere. I grew up on a road named after my grandfather. So that's how far in the country I grew up. Um, and I grew up with seven siblings. And so a very big family and two foster sisters. And so my parents actually did foster care for a really long time. So we would have all kinds of kids running around our house. But because we were in the country, we spent a lot of our time outside. So some of my favorite things about the country were uh, the forts we got to build. So we would build mm. massive tree forts. So not just like a, a normal tree fort. Our tree forts would have layers. So we'd have like first floor, second floor, third floor. And we'd put little devices like one tree fort my brother built. You could sit on a chair and pull yourself up on a pulley up into the tree fort. Wow. So I had the best childhood ever with tree forts. <laughs> <laughs> and then pets was another thing. My family loved animals. So I oh. actually had like a pet raccoon growing up named Lucky. I had a pet blackbird. We named him Pete. I would feed him dog food and I could pet him. We had <laughs> lizards. We had guinea pigs. We had 
all kinds of animals, baby snapping turtles, whatever we could catch, we turned into a pet. So I had <laughs> the best experience loving animals growing up as well. So that, that's a little bit about my childhood. It was the best. And if you came home with a baby raccoon and you were like eight years old, would your parents have told you to be like, get that thing back outside? <laughs> Honestly, if I ever did that, so I'm the youngest of four. And like, if I ever did that, I don't even think I would get a raccoon near the house before my siblings would have been like, nope. Uh, mm. <laughs> it wouldn't even, it would not have even got to my parents. Like they wouldn't have even known. <laughs> it would have been like, not a chance. <laughs> it's oh so cool gosh. to see all the different animals up close like that, though. It was a great experience. That's amazing. We one time had a raccoon who was who got stuck in our garage, and so like we left the garage out one day, and we were playing on the street, and a and like a little raccoon snuck in and was like made its home in the rafters. Oh, so we cool. had to we had to lure it out with peanut butter because apparently they really like peanut butter so we had to put baby powder at the edge of the garage and then peanut butter on the other side but the baby powder was to see his little footprints to see if he had left yet because you couldn't tell mm. and right. so I mean I had like I guess a pet raccoon but I never actually got the wow. poison, so I feel like that I missed out <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it was a pretty cool experience definitely uh for sure that's incredible. Well, thank you for the whole backstory. This is amazing. <laughs> um, now, with eight, no, so you're one of eight, and then with foster siblings as well, you probably have a ton of stories about sibling rivalries or maybe prank siblings played on you. Do you have any stories that you want to share? <laughs> sure. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I have three older brothers, and uh, yeah, pranks were one of the ways we kept busy growing up. Um, <laughs> uh, I'll, sh I'll share this story with you. I'm a big Christmas fan. I love Christmas and I love Christmas morning, the excitement of Christmas morning. And, uh, and my brothers loved doing pranks around Christmas time as well. But I remember this one time, I wanted to be the first one awake because I hated not waking up before some of my older brothers. And so I decided that evening I was going to drink a ton of water and then go to bed early because I thought if I can go to bed early I'm going to sleep away this like waiting and then Christmas morning will be there and I just wanted Christmas morning to come so I drank all this water and then I went to bed early and I remember my brothers thought it would be funny to come into my room at like 11 11 30 at night and scream it's Christmas morning and I'll be like and they'll think that I slept in and I'll think I'll slept in again so they came into my room it's like 11 o'clock clock and they're like Nathan Nathan wake up it's Christmas morning it's Christmas morning come see all the presents and so I came running out of my room ran downstairs to my mom and my dad sitting on the couch watching tv and I'm like my brothers just said it's Christmas they're like yeah it's not it's Christmas Eve it's only 11 o'clock go back to bed but I was so excited I couldn't get back to sleep and it took forever <laughs> and I had to pee because I drank all this <laughs> It was, it was one of those moments that I was so mad at them. I was so frustrated. They ruined my plans for Christmas Eve. <laughs> oh my gosh, man. Oh. I can't imagine living with three older brothers, just how many, how many tricks you got played on. <laughs> for sure. Absolutely. And, and the important thing was like, I always, I still had to live with them. That's mm -hmm. what was key, right? Like, mm -hmm. so even when I woke up on Christmas morning, they were still my brothers and I could have chose, you know, you're talking about being kind. Am I going to be kind to them or am I going to be mad and actually have that ruin my Christmas morning? And so it yeah. really, really taught us how to be kind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so true. And I think like, even just as we're spending more time at home with our siblings or our parents or our aunts or uncles or grandparents, whoever's in your house with you, you know, it can really test our patience and our ability to be kind. And so it's really awesome that we're talking about it this month, because I just feel like, I don't know if anyone else, but me, my patience seems to be, it's harder. It's harder to be kind all the time. As you know, the COVID is still happening and things are still a little bit strict for us. And so I'm really excited to keep learning and specifically today, like how to be kind to those 
who are close to us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's what we get to learn about today. So we are going to jump into today's story and then we will see you um, at the end. Bye, you guys. I'm Haley, and I am just performing one of my many duties as a super fan, and that is sending out fan mail. Special delivery! Woo! See? Ta da! Ooh, shiny. Yeah. It's important for my favorite people to know that they're my favorite people. That's part of kindness. Kindness is showing others they are valuable by how you treat them. Dear Kyle, I like your smile. You can shoot basketballs a quarter mile. <laughs> Let someone else rebound every once in a while. Your biggest fan. But don't get me wrong. I'm not just a fan of famous athletes. I'm fans of all kinds of people. Dear mom, you're the bomb. You're like the coolest.com. You make me want to shake a pom pom. <laughs> Your biggest fan. Hey. Dear sis. Mm. Uh... <sighs> okay. 
Well, I'll tell you this. The annoying way you chew is something I don't miss. And your taste in music makes me want to hiss. Your sis. Hey. Did you ever notice that it's harder to be kind to the people that you're closest to? Well, as you'll see in today's story, sometimes the people we're closest to are the people who need our kindness the most. I should probably rewrite this card to my sister. <sighs> yeah. See you in a bit. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the Book of Ruth. In the land of Moab, there lived a young woman named Ruth. She married a man from Judah and must have dreamed of a large family and many children. We'll name them Zeke and Hannah and... But Ruth's happily ever after ended before it began. Her husband died and his brother too, and that left Ruth alone with her sister-in-law Orpah and her mother-in-law Naomi, whose husband died too. I have nothing left. Naomi had come to live in Moab during a famine in Judah, but she had gotten word that there was plentiful food in her homeland again, so she planned to take a road trip. Ruth, Orpah, go back to your family homes. May the Lord show you kindness as you have shown me. So Orpah kissed her mother-in-law and left, but Ruth wouldn't budge. I'm going with you. Look, your sister-in-law is going back to her people. Don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God, my God. Well, okay then. Finally, after a long and dusty journey, the two women arrived in Naomi's hometown of Bethlehem. Everywhere along the road, barley rippled in the breeze, golden and ready to harvest. Is that Naomi? She don't look so good. Don't call me Naomi. The Lord has made my life bitter. I went away full and the Lord has brought me back empty. Don't listen to them. You just need dinner and a nap. Finding food was their top priority. Some of those barley fields belong to my husband's relative, Boaz. The grain is being harvested right now. Let me go to the fields and pick up the leftovers. Go, my daughter. The law instructed the landowners to leave behind some of the harvest for people who needed food. So Ruth followed behind the harvesters, gathering every bit of barley that fell to the ground. Barley. Let's see, you can barbecue it, boil it, broil it, saute it. Ruth worked hard in the heat of the day. In the afternoon, Boaz came out to survey the harvest. The Lord be with you. The Lord bless you. Boaz spotted Ruth hard at work and asked his overseer, Who is that young woman? She came back from Moab with Naomi. She asked if she could pick up the extra grain and has barely rested all day. Boaz was moved by Ruth's care for Naomi. He waded through the barley to speak with her. Stay here and follow along where the men are harvesting. I'll make sure no one bothers you. And when you're thirsty, you get a drink from the water jars. Why are you so kind to me, a foreigner? I've been told what you've done for your mother-in-law, how you left your homeland to come here. May the Lord reward you. Boaz offered Ruth bread and roasted grain to eat, and at the end of the day, she was able to bring a large amount of grain home to Naomi. So much food. Ruth continued to work in Boaz's fields until the end of the grain harvest, but even then, life would have been very difficult for two women living alone together. So Naomi laid out a plan for Ruth. I will do whatever you say. At the end of the harvest, the workers threshed the grain to separate the edible kernel from the straw. Then they held a big celebration. When the meal was over and the lights burned low, Boaz laid down near the pile of grain to sleep. Ruth arrived and approached Boaz just as Naomi had told her to do. She folded the blanket away from his feet and lay down nearby. <gasps> Who's there? It's me, Ruth. Please give me your protection since you're responsible for our family. 
Boaz was surprised, but what Ruth had said was true. The Lord bless you. Don't be afraid, I'll do what you ask. Everyone knows you are wise and kind. Even though Boaz agreed to help Ruth, there was a family member who was closer than Boaz. So in the morning, Boaz set out to meet that man and the town elders to settle the matter. I will buy Naomi's land and also marry Ruth, if you will let me. Well, I sure can't purchase Naomi's land and take care of my own land too. So we're good? Go right ahead. Today, you are all my witnesses that I will buy Naomi's land and marry her daughter-in-law, Ruth. As soon as it could be arranged, Boaz and Ruth were married. Naomi came to live with them, and a short time later, Ruth and Boaz had a new baby boy. His name is Obed. Aren't you the sweetest little thing? So through the kindness of Boaz and Ruth, Naomi had a brand new home and a brand new family too. Everyone could see the difference in her face. Praise be to the Lord. He's given you a new lease on life, Naomi. Yeah, that Ruth is better to you than seven sons. Now, Ruth's story doesn't end there. Her son, Obed, had a son named Jesse, who had a son named David, King David. And hundreds of years later, a new baby boy was born in Bethlehem, who was a descendant of King David, and his name was Jesus. A lot of kindness was being shown in Ruth's story. Boaz was kind to Ruth, Ruth was kind to Naomi, and through them, God was kind to all of us. Did you know Ruth was the great, 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 several great Slater, great, great, great grandmother of Jesus. Isn't that amazing? I am a huge fan of Ruth. <laughs> Dear Ruth, here's the truth. I've been a big fan ever since my youth. <laughs> Your biggest fan, Haley. Kindness matters, especially when it comes to the people we're closest to, like our family and friends. But the people we're closest to are the people who can also get on our nerves, right? So we're not always kind to them or sometimes we assume those people know how we feel about them, so we never tell them. But we shouldn't assume. We should tell people when we care about them. Or send them a letter. Special delivery to Ruth. And we should be kind to our friends and family even when they get on our nerves because God can use our kindness to do amazing things in their world. So here's the one thing to remember today. Be kind to your family and friends. Don't let your favorite people forget they're your favorite people. Dear sis, listen to this. If I didn't say I love you, it'd be a miss. Come on over sometime and we'll reminisce. Your sis, Haley. <laughs> yeah, there. Well, that's a much kinder card to someone who will be my sister for my entire life. <laughs> love you, sis. Yay. See you next time. You know, Anne and I spend a lot of time thinking about what you guys, uh, what we want you guys to learn and uh, what we want to teach you each week. But I do have to say, this is so applicable. I actually, I actually got into an argument with my sister earlier this week and I don't even live with her, but it just, it, there is this lifelong commitment to loving and being kind to our family because God wants us to, and that's how God wants us to live and function in the world. So even when you're older and you grow up and you might not, your family might not look how it looks like now, we still are so called to be kind to our family. It's really important. Yeah. And like, even just cheering each other on, like how we talked about that last week when Casey was shooting baskets and, you know, we, it's like, we want to cheer people on and be kind to them, but like, sometimes that feels really hard. And so it's such an important reminder and I feel like I can never be reminded of this enough like to be kind to love those around me to cheer them on um, and to just be the best version I can of myself so I can encourage other people and so um, Nathan we would just love if you would pray for us as we go this week and as our one to threes you know do their devotions and really try and just be kind to those around them. 
Yeah, I'd, I'd love to. Uh, and this is, this is such a great prayer. It's a prayer I pray often. Lord, help me to be kind. Uh, mm-hmm. So let's, let's pray right now. Uh, dear Jesus, we thank you that, uh, that you actually are a kind God and that Jesus, you modeled kindness for us. And so would you help us this week uh, to be kind, to be kind to our siblings, to be kind to our parents, to be kind to our friends. And would you show us in those, in those difficult times that we can actually pray to you and ask you to help us to be kind, that you want to strengthen and empower us to do that. Thank you for your presence with us. We ask this in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for joining us today, Pastor Nathan. It was such a privilege to have you. Thanks for having me. This is great. (laughs) We loved learning about your family. So thanks so much for joining us and we will see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.